Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks. Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Continuing Education, Bachelor's Degree Program, Elective Course, Rural Development, BRDE 101 Rural Development, Indian Context, Block 2 Rural Development, Unit 5, Sustainable Development. 5.0 Aims and Objectives this unit aims at describing the conceptual foundations of sustainable development. It will also discuss the various approaches and strategies required for sustainable development. At the end of this unit, you must be able to Understand the meaning of sustainable development Give reasons for justifying developmental activities to be sustainable, and Identify strategies for sustainable development for various sectors 5.1 Introduction Large-scale human activities leading to higher level of economic development ultimately leads to degradation and depletion of natural resources. The carrying capacity and threshold limit of the environment is often far exceeded. In this unit we will try to raise some issues regarding development that can be sustained. Let us start by C1 nearing the meaning of sustainable development. 5.2 Concept and Meaning of Sustainable Development Sustainable development is a term very popular recent times and found in many environmental and economics literature. The word sustainable popularly first used by the European foresters during 18th and 19th century. At that time many parts of one Europe was being deforested, and the foresters became increasingly concerned since wood was one of the driving forces in the European economy. The foresters, and especially the German foresters, in response to this crisis developed scientific or sustainable forestry. Their idea was very simple. If enough trees were planted to replace the wood provided by the trees that were harvested every year, and the growth rate of the entire forest was scientifically monitored to ensure this happened, then the forest W. would be sustainable. It would always grow enough wood fiber to replace the wood fiber lost to harvesting. Thus in the original idea, what sustainable means is that as a resource is used, it is replaced by growing additional amounts of resource. On the other hand, development in the context of sustainable development means that the underdeveloped or poor countries will become equal to the developed countries. This, in turn, will alleviate poverty and suffering in poor countries and make the world more equitable for all human beings. There are however, at least three classes of arguments one could make to justify a claim that economic activity should be sustainable. The present generation has main obligations to those generations, which will come in future. The second type of argument is ecological one. The economic activity that threatens to reduce ecological diversity is intrinsically undesirable. The third approach to justifying sustainability goal is an economic one. To develop an economic case, one should need to argue either that sustainable economic behavior is more efficient than non-sustainable behavior or that sustainable behavior is that which maximizes intertemporal social behavior. 5.3 Definitions of Sustainable Development Definitions of sustainable development are not themselves very interesting, although there is still interesting debates Euro 1 how development might be measured, in terms other than per capita gross national product, GNP. However, the main point is that what has to be done to secure sustainability? Pierce, 1998, suggests that the conditions for sustainable development are likely to be invariant with the definition since the conditions will couched in terms of opportunities, capacities and capabilities, i.e. sustainable development becomes an enabling concept rather than solely a particular path of change. What determines the ability of a given set of humans to improve their well-being, utility, is the quantity and quality of capital assets in other words, wealth available at the time. This notion can be traced back to the economic growth theory of the 1970s. It is elegantly and accessibly summarized by Solow, 1992. The concept of capital has widened from the classical approach, with its focus on produced goods or man-made capital to embrace the skills and knowledge embodied in humans, or human capital and natural capital. Natural capital refers to traditionally defined natural resources, such as oil or gas, forests, land and to the stocks of environmental assets such as clean air and water. Modem expositions of economic growth would add another type of capital, social capital. 
social capital concerns the relationships between individuals, between institutions, including government, and between individuals and institutions. In 1987, the World Commission of Environment and Development, WCED, presented its report in Our Common Future. The commission was headed by Gro Harlem Brundtland, the then Norwegian Prime Minister. The report was popularly known as Brundtland Report. Though the concepts of sustainable development existed even before the report was published, but it has initiated the process of making sustainable development an important issue worldwide. The Commission identified a number of common challenges facing the earth, population and human resources, food security, species and ecosystems, energy, industrial development, and urbanization. Those used the phrase, sustainable development to describe these challenges and proposing potential policy directions the world community could take to address the problem they had identified. Sustainable development requires meeting their major needs of all and extending to all the opportunity to satisfy their aspirations for a better life. However, living standards that go beyond the basic minimum are sustainable only if consumption standards everywhere have regard for long-term sustainability. 1987. In fact, sustainable development refers to that kind of growth that is determined by environmental quality. As such sustainable development indicates that the developmental activities are to be integrated with environmental policies. The report noted that the overall environment of the planet has deteriorated since the United Nations Conference on Human Environment in June, 1972 held at Stockholm. The Stockholm Conference declared that the protection and improvement of human environment is a major issue which affects the well-being of people and economic development throughout the world and it is the duty of all governments and people to exert common effort for the preservation and improvement of human environment, for the benefit of all people and their posterity. After the report, the Earth Summit on Environment and Development was held at Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in June, 1992. This was proposed by United Nations and called the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, UNST. At that summit the participating nations built upon the framework of Brundtland Report to create agreements and conventions on critical issues such as climate change, desertification and deforestation. They also drafted a broad action strategy, Agenda 21, as the work plan for environment and development issues for the coming decades. Throughout the rest of the 1990s, regional and sectoral sustainability plans have been developed. A wide variety of groups ranging from businesses to municipal governments to international organizations such as the World Bank, have adopted the concept and given it their own particular interpretations. Sustainable development, as a concept, has two primary pillars, economic development and the consumptive use of the world's natural resources in ways that are sustainable. In other words, resources should be used with the realization that resources are finite, and part of our job as human beings is to preserve the human future on this planet into a limitless future. In this concept of the limitless future, it also called for what it termed equity and the common interest. It declared that ecological interactions do not respect the boundaries of individual ownership and political jurisdiction. Rapid growth in production has extended it to the international plane, with both political and economic manifestations. Thus sustainable development stands for meeting the needs of present generations without jeopardizing the ability of future generations to meet their own needs, in other words, a better quality of life for everyone, now and for generations to come. It offers a vision of progress that integrates immediate and longer-term objectives, local and global action, and regards social, economic and environmental issues as inseparable and interdependent components of human. Economic definitions have tended to focus on sustainable development as non-declining per capita human well-being over time. Non-declining well-being is an intertemporal equity principle rather than an efficiency principle. It is well known that maximization of future utility streams is consistent with eventually declining utility. As such, sustainability is potentially inconsistent with a conventional benefit-cost approach since it denies the possibility that greater net benefits now can be secured at the expense of the future. 5.4 A Weak and Strong Sustainability It is a fact that all forms of capital are substitutable for each other. Weak sustainability, WS implies that, 
any one form of capital which can be run down provided proceeds are reinvested in other forms of capital. Weak sustainability does not necessarily imply that substitution is easy or inexpensive. It is not consistent with running down capital stocks and consuming the proceeds. For example, where an non-renewable asset such as a stock of oil is being mined, WS requires that some portion of the revenues of this mining activity be invested in alternative assets. Objections to weak sustainability tend to center on the assumed substitutability of capital stocks. Indeed, it can be argued that the philosophy of sustainable development arose precisely because there were concerns about the unsustainability of forms of economic development that sacrificed the environment in the name of economic growth. For example, in case ozone layer depletion due to increased use of CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, there are some substitutes for its protective functions. Skin cancers and cataracts are one of the risks of exposure to UV radiation. Individuals can protect themselves against these risks by wearing sunglasses and suitable clothing, as well as by changing behavior so as to avoid continued exposure. But high levels of UV radiation are also thought to interfere with immune systems and with the functioning of some important ecosystems, especially marine systems. It is far from clear what the substitute is in this context. The ozone layer may therefore have some of the characteristics of a unique asset crucial to well-being and perhaps survival. This aspect of non-substitutability of natural capital is called strong sustainability. SS does not imply that WS is irrelevant but in addition to WS it implies that stocks of natural capital should not decline. Check your progress 1. Note, I, give your answer in the space given below for each question. 2. Check your answer with the preceding text. I, what do you mean by sustainable development? You are listening to this audiobook on Audio Learn Agnu. 5.5 Various Approaches to Sustainable Development Understanding the pressing problems of unsustainable development has improved since UNST. More is now known of environmental degradation and social and economic marginalization. But responses have not been concerted. There have been success story, but they are fragmented. There have been improvements in meeting some environmental, social, or economic needs, but often in ways which cause other problems. Traditional approaches to sustainable development are often overlooked by policy makers. Moving towards sustainable development presents tremendous challenges. Important structural changes are needed to the way societies manage their economic social and environmental affairs. Different countries may settle for different solutions, but all will have to make hard choices. Strategies for sustainable development are about making and implementing such choices, in a realistic, effective and lasting way. Many countries have tried to plan their way out of problems in a technocratic manner, producing comprehensive, one-off national plans with accompanying sets of projects to be implemented. They were very often required, or inspired, by an external agency, and connected to financial conditionalities. Examples include national conservation strategies and environmental action plans. A review of experience shows that successful approaches share certain characteristics. They set priorities and establish a long A1M vision, seek to promote convergence between A. Ready existing planning frameworks promote ownership, can demonstrate national commitment and are built on appropriate participation. Lower levels of success can be attributed to strategies which overemphasize a product, take the F01M of one-off, separate initiatives, and are exclusively top-down. Strategies which have been presented as new concepts have undermined existing processes and wasted scarce resources by starting new processes from scratch. In addition, many strategies have failed to address the deep economic, social and institutional changes needed for sustainable development, while most countries have a number of strategic planning processes in existence, few, if any, have a system to effectively coordinate them. Developing such a coordination system will assist DOT in integrating all the components of sustainable development into mainstream planning processes.
enhanced coordination and convergence between different planning frameworks can also relieve the burden on capacity and resources. 5.6 Strategies and Initiatives for Sustainable Development Sustainable Development emphasizes three essential elements of future policy making. L. Environmental Protection 2. Economic Growth to Meet the Needs of the Society and 3. Safeguard to Human Health the World Commission's definition of sustainable development made it clear that the emphasis on future generations was only part of the story. Concern with the poor now we also important, indeed the highest priority. These questions pertain to the distribution of wealth within each generation. The analysis above can be applied to this equity issue as well, for the poor cannot improve their lot without access to productive capacity. If their well-being is to improve, then they must secure better education, better technology, more man-made capital, and more social capital. Social capital will matter as well in the sense of the need for more participation in decisions that affect their lives, and more consultation. Control over resources can be facilitated by establishing secure property rights to land and other resources. The discussion above suggests that the sustainable development over time can be analyzed in terms of the conditions necessary for its achievement, and that it hosts C conditions can be interpreted in terms of a constant capital rule, CCR, which means that the change in the real value of assets must be negative in the aggregate. This requires modification insofar as a. Technological change increases the well-being that can be derived from a given stock of assets. b. Population growth can be thought to decrease the per capita well-being derived from this same given stock. Sustainable development focuses on improving the quality of life for all of the Earth's citizens without increasing the use of natural resources beyond the capacity of the environment to supply them indefinitely. It requires an understanding that inaction has consequences and that we must find innovative ways to change institutional structures and influence individual behavior. It is about taking action, changing policy and practice at all levels, from the individual to the international. Sustainable development will not be brought about by policies only, it must be taken up by society at large as a principle guiding the many choices each citizen makes every day as well as the big political and economic decisions. This requires profound changes in thinking, in economic and social structures and in consumption and production patterns. Conservation efforts are rarely successful in the absence of a general understanding of the need to integrate environmental consideration into the development strategy. It becomes necessary therefore to practically demonstrate the superiority of ecologically sound projects and technologies which can promote such understanding and environmental sensitivity. The World Conservation Strategy was prepared by the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources, now called the World Conservation Union IUCN, in cooperation with the World Wildlife Fund WWF, the United Nations Environment Programme and other UN agencies, such as Food and Agriculture Organization and the United Dot Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. The World Conservation Strategy defined conservation in human terms as T.1e management of human use of the biosphere so that it may yield the greatest sustainable benefit to present generations while maintaining its potential to meet the needs and aspirations of future generations. Development, it said, was the modification of the biosphere and the application of human, financial, living and non-living resources to satisfy human needs and improve the quality of human life. For development to be sustainable it must take account of the social and ecological factors as well as economic ones, of the living and non-living resource base, and of the long-term as well as the short-term advantages and disadvantages of alternative actions. 5.7 Strategies for Sustainable Rural Development in India the vision of the Rural Pro-S Group of the Central Government is to contribute to the knowledge and practice of sustainable development of ecologically sensitive, stressed, fragile areas through promotion of equitable and sustainable livelihood strategies. 
Center for Environment and Education, CEE, develops, adapts and encourages a variety of natural resource management approaches through its programs and facilitates such initiatives by other groups. Through its field programs designed especially for communities living in rural areas, C has developed programs for income generation and better utilization of resources. These into the activities aimed at creating awareness among the communities ab. at the ecological significance of the areas around which they live. Projects to demonstrate environmentally sound, practical alternatives to support sustainable resource management in ecologically fragile areas, including areas around national parks and sanctuaries are also undertaken. Some of these projects are 1. Gramnidid Eco Enterprises for Sustainable Livelihoods. C's proposal Gram Nidhi Eco Enterprises for Sustainable Livelihoods was one of the 20 winners, selected from among 1,500 applicants, in the first ever India country level development marketplace competition, sponsored by the World Bank. The proposal aimed towards developing financial and human capital to conserve natural resources, leading to sustainable livelihoods. An Eco-Enterprise Vestment Committee, EIC, channels the funds as small working capital for eco-enterprises on commercially sustainable rates of interest, along with adequate capacity building and information servicing. The EIC includes members of the Paryavaran Vikas Mandals, PVMs, of the five villages, one member each from the Narmada Trust, the local NGO partner, C and an ex-officio member from the local bank. Government officials and experts. The eco enterprise produces goods and services that are economically efficient and viable, ecologically sustainable and socially acceptable, using resources and appropriate technology. They derive maximum leverage from the local cultural and natural environment by drawing upon existing managerial and technical skills and developing a cadre with social sensitivity and environmental concern. Some of the enterprises have been jointly evolved as eco packages by the VMs and C. 2. Endogenous Tourism Project in Northeast C has been selected as an implementing partner for the Endogenous Tourism Project of the UNDP and Ministry of Tourism, Government of India in three proposed sites in northeastern states. The goal is to promote local culture and craft-based eco-tourism for sustainable livelihoods and integrated rural development. 3. Andhra Pradesh District Poverty Alleviation Initiatives C is the Environment Agency, EA, for two World Bank-supported projects Andhra Pradesh District Poverty Initiatives Project, Upad Peep, and Andhra Pradesh Rural Poverty Red Election Project, ERP. Implemented in 22 districts by the government of Andhra Pradesh through the Society for Elimination of Rural Poverty, SERP. C is responsible for designing and implementing the environmental management framework. This seeks to ensure that neither the livelihoods of the poor nor the environment are compromised. 4. Halwad Sustained Program in Villages C's Halwad Field Office has been working for the last four years on holistic participatory rural development programs, commencing with earthquake rehabilitation in 36 villages of Halwad Taluka of Surendranagar district, at the fringe of the little run of Kutch, a wild ass sanctuary. The rehabilitation interventions of shelter and school construction, occupation revival, and drought proofing represented an opportunity for initiating long-term sustainable livelihoods and natural resource management activities by empowering communities, facilitating partnerships and creating local decision-making structures. 5. Samvardhan 2 The project aims at improving the quality of life of the tribal communities of the southern belt of Gujarat especially with regard to safe drinking water, natural resource productivity, animal husbandry practices, income generation opportunities access and effectiveness of the primary education, and empowering village local self-governance towards sustainable development regardless of the project's existence. The project is being implemented through a community-based approach in 24 villages spread across four blocks and three districts of Gujarat.
Toe project functions in three thrust areas, that is drink along water, livelihood and primary education and aims to achieve four cross-cutting outcomes in all interventions. 6. Up Forestry Project, Eco Development Programs C. Assisted the Forest Department, Uttar Pradesh in providing support for guiding the preparation and implementation of eco-development microplans by village communities around PAs in Kamur Sanctuary, Ranipur Sanctuary, Chandraprabha Sanctuary, Chambal National Sanctuary and Wetland Clusters in Up and Corbett National Park. C's role was essential to assist the forest department through the social motivators to reach the communities in an effective manner, to provide support to the program during training and to facilitate micro-plan preparation and implementation. 7. Ranthambhor Eco-Development Program C's first eco-development program for implementation of various educational and Devi up mental programs was launched around the Ranthambhor National Park in Rajasthan Mu in selected villages. The focus of the program RIND was on environmental improvement by people themselves through environmentally sound technologies. Communicate underscore on education programs were developed for areas of animal husbandry, cooperative dairies soil and water conservation, watershed development, tea, energy efficient devices, alternative fuels, etc. C team worked closely with the local NGOs and several government departments. 8. Hingolgar Eco Development Program C's Hingolgar program has been in operation in 17 villages around the Hingolgar Nature Education Sanctuary, Jasdan Taluka, Rajkot District. Gujarat for the past 17 years. The program commenced with a focus on empowering local communities to upgrade and conserve local natural resources. It aimed at creation of an alternative resource base for meeting fuel and fodder needs of the villagers, optimization of exiting resource through introduction of new and improved practices and technologies, development of education and communication material and training programs to aid effective implementation. The revised sustainable development strategy will need to adopt a broader approach highlighting the structural changes in the economy needed to move towards more sustainable production and consumption patterns and covering unsustainable trends. With a further strengthening of the new approach to policy making, the revised strategy will reaffirm its three-dimensional approach and also ensure the full integration and reinforcement of the external aspects of sustainable development. Check your progress too. Note I. Give your answer in the space given below for each question. 2. Check your answer with the preceding text. 1. Enlist the essential elements required for future sustainable development policy. 2. What do you mean by Gramnidhi? You are listening to this audiobook on Audio Learning Gnu. 5.8 The Strategy for Sustainable Agriculture Development Sustainable agriculture, which refers to the long-term management of agriculture is a common and widely defined term that encompasses a range of strategies for addressing a number of problems facing agriculture worldwide. The alternative farming system comes to known as natural farming or organic farming is an integrated farming technique involving technical aspects, soil, agronomy, weed and pest management, and economic aspects, input, output and marketing as well as human health considering the problems associated with chemical fertilizer and pesticides. Some desirable components in the sustainable farm research are soil nutrient management, input of organic matter, cropping rotation systems, non-pesticidal method to control diseases and insects and proper weed management. In emphasizing the sustainability of agriculture, it is also necessary to maintain the productivity index achieved during post-green revolution to meet growing demand. As such suitable step are required to stop underscore further degradation of soil and water resources and give stress for long-term strategy. There is the diverse spectrum of cropping patterns and agricultural systems due to wide variation in topography, climate, socio-economic conditions and traditional beliefs. Different regions slash zones appear to be altogether different in soil conditions, rainfall pattern, temperature humidity and location of perennial rivers. Among the researchers and policy makers, 
It is now agreed that there is the need to adopt the principle of natural farming as a tool for conservation of the environment and a low input sustainable agriculture. It consists of 1. Recycling of organic wastes and crop residues, 2. Crop rotation and intercropping, 3. Green manuring, 4. Bio fertilizers, 5. Vermiculture, 6. Biological control. So far as the adoption and diffusion of sustainable agricultural strategy is concerned, it is to be noted that if a technology is not profitable and come an unica be relatively difficult to adopt and not compatible with socio-cultural factors, it is not likely to be accepted and adopted by the farmers. Again the language communicating the message also acts as an important factor for adoption. Some other important factors are socio-economic status of a farmer, attitude to change, aspiration for achievement, motivation, level of literacy and contracts with extensive agency. But, communication skill of communicators, his attitude towards the fanning community and his credibility and expertise all determine the success of efforts to communicate the technology. 5. 9. Let US sum up. Efforts have been made to acquaint you with the concept, meaning arid definitions of development. The study of the unit will enable you to make distinctions between weak and strong sustainability. Now you will be able to explain various approaches, strategies and initiatives related to sustainable development in general and several examples of Indian cases where the sustainable strategies have been applied to attain sustainability. The study of this unit will provide comprehensive knowledge related to various aspects of sustainable development along with the initiatives related to sustainability in agriculture. 5.10 Keywords Sustainable development, it stands for meeting the needs of present generations without jeopardizing the ability of future generations to meet their needs. Weak sustainability, any one form of the capital which can be run down provided proceeds are reinvested in other forms of capital. Thank you, we will see you in the next video.